Watch Jason Chabitz give Americans one final warning about FBI before Trey Gowdy takes his seat. Former House Intelligence Committee Chairman Jason Chabitz, Republican of Utah, issued one final warning to the American people about the FBI before vacating his seat for South Carolina Congressman Trey Gowdy. Now Chabitz's warning is sending out a shockwave over the internet as he goes out on a limb to make people aware of what the FBI is doing to innocent, law-abiding citizens. According to the SGT report, Chavitz made his startling warning during one of his final days in Congress while he was questioning Acting Deputy Assistant Attorney General Richard Downing. Downing, who works for the Department of Justice, was present to answer questions on the FBI's secret con collection of facial recognition data. Chavitz created the opportunity for his warning by asking Downing a question to which he already knew the answer. Watch as the former House Intel chairman expresses his distrust for the FBI and its unconstitutional behavior. In other words, we can be imperialistic but not that imperialistic. That's right. We wouldn't like it very much if they imposed their rules on us. Um, I think we need to be uh, at least a little bit balanced about it. Thank you. My time has expired. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. We now go to the Chairman of the Oversight Committee, Mr. Chaffetz. Uh, thank you. I, I do appreciate it. Um, Former chairman, but um, you'll always be a chairman to me, chair. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. McGinnis, we cherish our relationship with the UK. We thank you personally for what you do and, and uh, for the relationship between the two, the two countries. Um, and Mr. Downing, I think it's important for us to understand sort of the baseline because if we're going to be trying to do things in other countries, I'm still concerned about what we do and don't do in this country. So first, help me understand uh, about geolocation. What is the Department of Justice's position on geolocation? Uh, my concern is, a question for you, is do you, does the Department of Justice consider that metadata or is that content? How, how do you view geolocation? Uh, thank you for the question. Geolocation is a difficult and complex topic as, uh, as I'm sure uh, most, uh, we, we understand that we've had discussions about this in the past as well. Um, there are different kinds of geolocation that could be content or could be non-content. It could be content if it's, say, the location data that's embedded inside of a picture file and is being passed as part of an attachment to an email. It could be non-content if it's simply information that the provider is gathering about its customer's use of cell towers doesn't actually have any contentful value in that situation. It's simply an observation of the company about which tower a particular phone is paying off of when it's being used. So um, I think it's a so there are times when geolocation is content, correct? There can be times, yes. OK, so where do I go to figure out the difference and how you view? I mean, have you written this out? Is there, is there some sort of definition the Department of Justice is taking on the nuances of what geolocation is and is not, because I would argue that by and large, geolocation is content. It's the content of my life. If you can tell where I'm going with this phone all the time, you can pretty much tell the content of my life, and yet I worry about what you're gathering and not gathering, and I don't understand the definition. So our view of the, the rules that apply when we're gathering geolocation information vary depending on what type of geolocation it is. Uh, our position has been that if we are merely talking about what cell tower your phone is paying off of, that that uh, is uh, covered by the Stored Communications Act uh, and would be uh, require a court order before we're able to obtain it. This is an issue actually that the Supreme Court has just recently decided to take a, a cert petition on, and so it will be very interesting to see how they resolve that question. There are other kinds of geolocation information, such as GPS, which is very specific and generally gathered prospectively. In those situations, I think, as you know, we use a warrant for that. So I think we use a, a nuanced approach. We look at the law that applies and try to do our best to comply with that law. Well, I, don't know that, I don't know that every department and agency, even within the Department of Justice, uses that same standard. And certainly when you start to look at Homeland Security and others, they don't necessarily follow those same standards. And so 
I guess what I'm looking for is in writing the definition of what that is. Let me ask you very quickly, on social media, is it the position of the Department of Justice, particularly in the hiring and the monitoring of existing uh, security clearances, to look at social media? Is that fair game or not fair game? You know, I'm, I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that question, but I'm happy to take it back uh, to, to get you an answer. I think it is important. It's been a struggle to try to get people, particularly in the realms of, uh, of security clearances, even to get our own federal employees to be able to look at, you know, when they're assessing security clearances, to look at their social media and whatnot. And the last thing I want to ask you about is facial recognition. We know the Department of Justice, specifically the FBI, is building a database of facial recognition. What direction is this going? Where where are the standards? What What is happening or not happening in the building of the facial recognition database? So I'm, I'm not intimately familiar with uh, what the FBI is doing in that regard. Uh, my general impression is that they are developing um, uh, a database similar as they would with fingerprints and other things of um, people who were of interest uh, in an investigation, who were arrested, um, in order to be able to better... Okay, well, it, 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 you, it, you obviously do it, and I, with all due respect, you got a big, big plate to... But please do look at this, because that is not what they're doing. If they were looking at criminals, people who are incarcerated, people who have committed crimes, that would be one thing. But what they're doing is, now more than one out of every two members in our, our society are in the database, or they have access to that database, I should say, because they're proactively going and gathering all the... the uh, facial, uh, or all the pictures that are on driver's licenses. Mo a lot of states have uh, MOUs uh, with these states, and it, they were supposed to, the FBI was supposed to provide some notification. They didn't do that, and the big question is, I feel like I have a fundamental problem and challenge in taking innocent, suspicionless Americans and building a database because we've shown we can't protect our databases. So. I think we need to ferret that out as a, a committee. I won't be here much longer, but I do think that is something that the committee should look at, take a much closer look at without a yield back. I thank the gentleman and uh, Mr. Chaffetz, in case we don't get another public opportunity on this committee to thank you for your service for so many years and for your championing people's privacy rights, including geolocation. You, it's something that here on this side of the day as center and left we're all noting that uh, somebody's going to have to pick up that, uh, that chalice uh, on your behalf. Well, thank you. I, I'm honored to serve, so thank you. Thank you. With that, we go to the gentlelady from San Jose, Ms. Lawford. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and thanks to the uh, two witnesses, especially our... Um... Shabbat's starts off by laying the premise for his warning by addressing Downey directly. And it goes on. And it's very important. Let us know what you think in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.